when I choose to open myself up to the fact that I am connected to what's around me and there's magic in all of it, the world becomes a very different place to live in and suddenly my mind begins to think about things in a magical way. Hey there, magical people. April here on Natural Witchery and today I wanted to talk a bit about spirits, connecting with spirits, connecting with the spirits of the land, connecting with animal spirits, connecting with plant spirits. Let me know in the comments box down below if you connect with spirits, what part of your practice this is, or if this is something that you're looking to pursue. If you're new here, hi, I'm April. And oh my God, my dog's just going crazy and running circles outside the door here. Um, oops, wait, I think he's got a bird. Hold on. All right, disaster averted there. Um, where was I? Okay, yes. <laughs> if you're new here, hi. Uh, the goal of my channel is really to share about my life, to share about my natural witchery. The fact that witchery is something that's really natural. I think that in many ways, uh, for many people coming into this realm, there are so many books out there kind of saying, do it this way, do it that way. And my goal in sharing with you is to share that witchcraft is something that is very natural when we tune into who we are and we allow ourselves to believe in ourselves. So in sharing my experience here, my hope is that you will feel empowered to tap into the magic that's all around you and to do so in a way that is natural to you, natural to your environment, natural to the stage of life that you're in, natural to where you live. Like I live in the country. Some of you live in the city. You're going to connect in ways that are right for you with where you are right now. And so I really want you to feel empowered to get away from the idea that a book has the answer and the way that it has to be done so that you can really tap in right here, right now, today, into your own magic, power, and sovereignty. Before we jump into my ramble, I wanna let you know that down below, you can get into my free learning library. There's a link down there when you sign up for my newsletter. Just do yourself a favor and bookmark the learning library so that you don't have to go back and keep signing up <laughs> again and again. Um, once you're in my newsletter, every newsletter comes with a link to the learning library. So also if you save one of my newsletters, you'll always be able to get to the learning library fun stuff in there and it's always growing. For me, as I've gone through life, I've always had a sense of being connected to the things around me. I think I've just been a natural animist, connecting to the spirits that are in the, even the objects, the trees, the plants, the animals that are around me. Maybe you've been wanting to connect with spirits, like spirits of the land that are around you or the spirit of a certain plant or herb that you're working with. When it comes to connecting with the spirits that are around you is to start where you are. If this is something that you're interested in, I would just trust myself. Allow yourself to really reach out to the object or the tree or the herb that you are encountering and give yourself some space to trust that you can connect with that spirit and to honor your own magic and honor the, the way that it unfolds for you. A lot of times I have developed relationships with different herbs, the spirits of each herb individually by working with it over time, cultivating it in my garden, getting to know it. And I do have certain plants in my yard that I really talk to. Like I feel like I really know these herbs. I really have a relationship with these spirits. And it feels very intimate to me, like rosemary, lavender, you know, sage. Uh, and then I have certain plants that are really prolific around here that I feel like I have a relationship with, bramble. And then I have trees that are natural to my environment that I see every day. We have a whole forest of maples right here surrounding our property. And so I spend time with the maples a lot. I love connecting with the spirit of oak. Uh, I have a cedar right outside next to my hot tub. I have a hazelnut right next to my hot tub. That hazelnut and I are friends. I have spent hundreds of hours in my hot tub next to that hazelnut talking to it. I've done magical workings under that tree. It's, it's a tree that, I mean, that particular tree, not just hazelnut in general, but that particular tree and I have this profound relationship. I think finding our relationships with spirits of place, of like the land that's around us is probably the easiest way to tap into our own personal magic and develop that feeling of connectedness 
and also the ability to glean um, wisdom and knowledge. There's so much that the spirits around us have to teach us if we will be willing to tap into, I call it the sparkles, the magic that's all around us. And when I allow myself to go beyond the fact that I'm human and somehow separate myself from the plant kingdom or the animal kingdom that's around me or just the land itself, the earth, the mycelium, everything that's going on. When I move away from this idea that this is all I am, then suddenly this whole universe opens up to me of relationship. And I have found it very profound, very powerful to develop relationships with the immediate earth, the immediate place around me. If you live in the city, then I think it's a great idea to get to know the trees in your neighborhood, to create relationship with them. When my girls were little, the library was next to, it was a maple, but they called it oak, oaky. And we would get out of the car at the library and the kids would run up and say, oaky, oaky. And they would run up to the tree and they would give oaky a hug and it was a part of our daily trip to the library. I mean, the kids remember that tree. Uh, we spent a good couple years going to that, that library and loving on that tree. And it was such a profound connection for them in the city that was really important. So if you're in the city and you're not out on a wild piece of land like I am, don't think that you can't have these relationships. You can have these relationships with your potted plants that are in your house. I mean, I have house plants and I'm really close and connected to them. They, they speak to me. I think, again, it's a profound part of natural witchery to choose to connect with what is readily available to you. The animal kingdom. I mean, some of you have pets out there. I'm sure you would think, not think of your pet as less than somehow disconnected from you. You're probably intimately connected to your pet. But the same goes for the animals that are out and about. As I was getting ready to film this, the Blue Jays were just going nuts. And I stopped to kind of check in, to tune in like, wow, why are suddenly all of the Blue Jays going off like this? And they were just singing to the rain. There's a really soft rain going on. And when the rain begins and it's soft like this, the birds sing. So checking in with that natural magic that is all around. I think it is so profound, so beautiful, something that's so readily available to us. As part of being a natural witch or a natural practitioner of magic, some of you don't, don't connect with the word witch, I think it's just vital for each one of us to trust the relationships that are available to us and to reach out to those relationships and cultivate them and let our own magic be what it is. I could sit here and tell you all about, you know, the experiences I've had sitting under the hazel and the feelings that I get, but those are not your feelings. And I think sometimes we're like, we're looking for a book. We're looking for a way. We're looking for the way to tap into something that is really available to all of us if we only trust our own magic and allow ourselves to, to believe to believe in that relationship, to believe in the existence of those sparkles, to believe in that connection and to sink into it and to find our own ways to sink into it. You know, if you're in the city, maybe you're gonna take your coffee and you're gonna, you're gonna sit there for a moment with that tree, you're gonna pass by. Maybe it's that, that tree that you pass every day on the way to somewhere that you go and you just day after day have that interaction that is your own, that's meaningful and is completely something that is not predicated on someone else's experience. It's your experience and that's where, what makes it truly magical. We're gonna tap into the land in different ways and different seasons, right? The spirit of the land. We can tap into the spirit of water as it's snowing or raining. We can tap into the earth in profound ways when it's warm enough to have our shoes off, right? Our feet can be touching the earth. There's so many different ways to really get in touch with nature. Sometimes I put my back up against a tree. Most of the time though, I like to put my hands on a tree. I really, I really connect this way. Some of you, you're gonna have your eyes open. Some of you, you're gonna have your eyes closed. You can use divination tools. You can get out there and ask questions with your pendulum, yes or no questions of the tree that you are interacting with. 
realizing that different spirits have different ways of interacting. Uh, you know, animals interact differently with me than herbs do, than trees do, than stones do. And just exploring that, being okay with exploring the spirit in what is around me and available to me. So my question to all you magical people out there is how are you connecting with the spirits around you? The spirits that are in, if you're an animist, then it's really easy to think of like everything having a spirit, even books, even objects, you know, this, this table. Uh, this has been a good friend to me for a long time, you know? These books that are up here, they have their own spirit, their own energy. Some of you may have sacred objects on your altar, your athame, your chalice, you know. Some of you may have singing bowls that you have relationships with. All of these things offer us gateways into the liminal. When I choose to open myself up to the fact that I am connected to what's around me and there's magic in all of it, the world becomes a very different place to live in and suddenly my mind begins to think about things in a magical way. Next time I want to talk about deity, connecting with deities. How many of you connect with deities or want to connect with deities? This is something that I have done in very surprising ways over the breadth of my life. And I really want to share with you the different ways that I have connected, kind of my longing to connect with certain deities and actually how it's gone down for me because I feel like that's a really, a, there's a discrepancy there. And I'd love to just put out to you a little bit of my journey and what that's been like and how I am progressing along that road, how my thoughts have changed with connecting with deity to where I am now. You know, it was so different when I was younger and looking back, I have just so many, um, I can see all the twists and turns and where different deities were with me, even though I wasn't cognizant of it. So that's next time. <laughs> the next time I do one of these talks, but... May you find the strength to believe in your own magic and connect with the spirits that are all around you, cultivate that relationship, and engage in the wisdom that the two of you have to share with one another. Are you my sweetie cat? Let me just get a little hug. Let me just get a little hug. Oh, let me just get a little hug. Oh, I need to... Ooh, growling at me, huh? No hugs for me today?